Good morning, everybody. It's Brian Caprice, the CEO of Keep Trading Simple, and welcome to this week's Monday Morning Market Breakdown. Uh, this is the last week of July, and it's actually split in half. Um, as we mentioned last week, it was the last full one, and it was kind of a slow week. And I said, one of the things I mentioned was, going into August, things tend to pick up. This week is that week, and there is a lot going on. Um, so again, I'm going to jump into it pretty quick today because we do have a lot to cover and there are a lot of news releases that we need to discuss and kind of talk about and go into some, some of the charts, okay? So that being said, for those of you new that don't know me, I'm the president and CEO of Keep Trading Simple and our mission is to simplify trading and help remove distractions that the professionals tell you have to use. So many tools out there are not going to help you. Again, we are price action traders. Uh, we focus on what the charts are showing us, not what we expect. There are no crystal balls uh, and that's what we're trying to you know, get traders away from. Um, I've developed a couple different strategies to help traders kind of not get confused, um, to really keep things simple. A 30 minute trader program, as well as a five minute trader course, um, are both based off, you know, are, are designed for traders with full time jobs. Um, I am not one of these believers that you need to be in front of a computer for 16 hours a day or 14 hours a day. Uh, it's not healthy for you. Get outside, do other things, um, use technology. Okay. And that's what we, you know, we like to focus on. Uh, my background, so you guys understand where a lot of kind of my opinions and things come from. Um, I've been trading since about eh, the, the later part of 2000, early part of 2001. Um, started in, in traditional options, went to stocks, found currencies, really fell in love with that one. And um, basically I've traded everything at this point. Um, I did spend some time with an advisory division of one of the big three banks. I think they're actually part of the big two banks now. Uh, but I left that because it really wasn't what I thought it was. Um, I wasn't looking at charts. I wasn't, you know, really wasn't helping people. It was, okay, these are the products you can, you know, put people's money in and that's it. Um, and I knew how to do a lot more. So Spent some time, about six years, traveling around, um, doing seminars to teach people how to trade. And now I basically just do it from home. I have a little girl. Uh, she is now walking. She is uh, 14 months old. So she, she's what occupies most of my time now, as well as uh, you know running Keep Trading Simple. And then my two sons there, I coach for them. So we stay quite busy. Uh, but that's where you guys will understand kind of where my mentality is and, and how I'm looking at charts and, and that. And I think that's important to understand. Okay. Now, before we begin, let's go through the Nadex Risk Disclaimer. Trading on Nadex involves financial risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. The information presented here is for information and education purposes only and should not be considered an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Now, any trading decisions you make are solely your responsibility. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Nadex contracts are based on underlying asset classes, including Forex, stock index futures, and commodity futures. Now, trading can be volatile and investors risk losing their investment on any, any given transaction. However, and this is extremely important, however, the design of Nadex contracts ensures investors cannot lose more than the cost to enter the transaction. Now, Nadex is subject to U.S. regulatory oversight by CFTC. Uh, and again, also important to understand. And again, if you've traded options before, if you are new to Nadex, um, understand it is very, very similar to kind of buying options to where the most you can lose is whatever you put into the trade. Nadex is the same exact way. Um, and again, extremely powerful point when you guys understand about trading. Um, and if you don't, definitely go over to Nadex's education section uh, on their website and uh, go read all about that and watch the videos. Some really great stuff over there. All right. Let's go into the top three of the week. Now, this week, there is a lot of stuff going on. Um, I will pull that down in a second, but these are my top three. All right. And I want to explain these top three as well as give you a bit of a warning. I didn't point the, the big red warning message across the middle today. Uh, I could have, uh, but again, I'll explain that with number two. So number one, Friday, August 2nd, my birthday month. So it's going to be a party all month in August. Obviously, non-farm employment change. Um, yeah, non-farm payroll is a big deal. It's typically the biggest market mover besides an interest rate change. Um, but interest rate changes don't happen too often. Okay, so that's, your, that's our biggie. And again, this summer, some of the data has gone down. Some of the data has gone up. Economy's great. Economy's not great. We're protecting a recession, but no inflation. A lot of things have gone back and forth. This is going to be our, our biggest opportunity, I believe, of the week. There are a lot of them, so this was kind of a hard decision. Um, but again, preparing is all, you know, this is always going to be a big deal, um, especially with what we have uh, late, you know, earlier in the week. Okay. Um, at that time as well, there are other things going on. Um, again, there's always some type of, you know, yeah, we have, you know, Average earnings there. Uh, we also have CAD trade balance, which is kind of important as well. Um, and a couple of things to look at that non-farm employment. Uh, again, the number of jobs we bring on board is what the employment change is. That's always important. It's supposed to be less than it was last time, although last time there was a surprise. 
The average hourly earnings is at that time, not as important, but the third one is the unemployment rate. Okay, the unemployment rate does matter. It's not expected to change. So if that one is off, even by just point 0.1, there tends to be some movement and the news people will take that one and run with it all day long. Okay, so that's why that is the number one kind of trade opportunity of the week. Now, number two, you can see the federal funds rate cut. And I am saying rate cut because they've already said that they are cutting it, okay? So why this is number two is because there is an FOMC statement at the same exact time that is also going to foreshadow, is this going to be a one and done, okay? Um, originally, a couple weeks ago, people were calling instead of a 0.25 cut, people wanted a 0.5 cut, okay? They wanted to take it back down to two. Now, the FOMC came out pretty quickly and made comments about, um, you know, basically about not going overboard and doing too much and, and, and basically kind of put the lid on, okay, we're not doing 50. And then, you know, and everybody's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then they came out and said that those statements were just generalized statements that they didn't necessarily pertain to this. So there is a chance that actually it looked like the market before had wanted that 0.5 cut, okay? So what's happening right now is everybody has factored in, the market has factored in a 0.25% cut. Okay, if that comes out, don't expect the markets to go crazy. They're not gonna bounce 800 pips left and right. You know, it's already factored in, okay, that's gone. But there is still the chance and there are people that believe that 0.5 cut is coming, as well as if it's only a 0.25, but then they make a cut about how we will continue to evaluate this as we see necessary or as we see fit. Again, one of the mandates that we have is inflation that's not really there. So that's kind of one of those things that, you know, if the inflation is not there, there's no reason not to keep cutting because they have certain mandates. That that type of language, that will be a mover, okay? So a lot of stuff going on. Okay, now your warning at that point is be very, very cautious with the positions that you have on. If you have any positions on at about the same time, you should think about getting out of them, okay? Here's why. If there's something bad, right, That uh, well, bad for your position, it's going to move fast. You'll never be able to get out of the trade fast enough to be able to protect the profit that you have in there. Okay. With that being said, some people say, well, I'll just put a stop loss on. Even if you have a stop loss on and it is bad, it can get past your stop loss and you can lose more than you thought you could lose by using that stop loss. So be very, very cautious with it. It's something like a federal funds rate cut. Okay. It's not something to joke around with or mess with, especially with where we are in the economy right now. Okay. Um, but I will say, the chance of there being absolutely no cut is basically slim to none at this point. It's either going to be a 0.25 or a 0.5 cut. So again, prepare for that one. Um, the stock market will like it either way. I expect this will be a good week for the stock market. Um, it has obviously been factored in, but again, lower interest rates is, you know, again, always good for the, you know, the overall stock market. All right. Um, there is a press conference at 2.30 as well. So again, just be kind of protected. Now, I tried to mix it up because like I said, it's, this week is definitely back end heavy and I'll go through that in a second. Third one is going to be uh, on July. Um, oops, not it's not all. It's not, <laughs> oops, hold on. Let me change this for you guys real quick. Um, this one is Tuesday, not Aussie. It is in the Aussie, but I was so excited for the Aussie. Okay, the reason why we have this on Tuesday, July 30th at 9:30. Whoops, p.m. Thought I had changed that. I'm sorry. Um, again, this is CPI. Okay, CPI is definitely something that has been a market mover for all pairs. The Aussie being the only thing that is trading at 9.30 at night, I tried to spread these out. We have one at 8.30, one at 2, one at 9.30 p.m. With the Aussie being the only market open at that point, I mean, you're in the Asian session at that point, you can get some nice movement, you know, 30, 40, even potentially 50 pips on a CPI number. Now, remember, they're, you know, they're cutting in that, in that region as well, okay? It's definitely slowing in the economy. CPI will be an important factor for that, okay? Um, again, if you're familiar with trading binaries, Go across and look at the two-hour binaries at that point. Those have smaller strike differentials. You can play some retraces. There's a lot of stuff you can do over there, okay? So great trading opportunity, okay? Is it the biggest blockbuster of the week? No, but these are the top three trading opportunities of the week, all right? So let's see. Um, with that being said, let me pull daily effects in so you guys can kind of see what we're looking at news-wise. And again, if you haven't been over here, great website, a lot of great articles, a lot of things going on on here, right? Go to the economic calendar. Okay, first thing we're going to do is kind of sync this up, and uh, I am in this one right here. Uh, we're going to go to the filters. We're going to take Mexico off. We'll take low. We're going to leave medium because the medium releases will actually matter this week. All right, um, let me go into the weekly view as well. All right, so going in today, you can see that we had a bunch of stuff early morning, right? 
and then it's kind of slow. And again, Mondays tend to always be the slow days. That just again, people are coming online from the weekend. Um, I, I guess the uh, you know the economic news guys they like to party too, especially in the summer. So um, you guys can see not a lot for today, right? Some jobless claims, jobless rates, things like that. Um, building approvals aren't typically huge movers. Building permits, same thing. Jobless rates can. Um, so we'll see what the uh, yen does today in response to the you know U.S. and London money coming online and fighting for a bit. Um, this could be you know a slight mover and, and affect things like the pound yen or the dollar yen, okay, or even the Aussie yen. Uh, going into Tuesday, this is where kind of everything starts to hit. So BOJ rate, you know, BOJ rate decision, okay. It's already you know 0 0.10, so again, there's not supposed to be anything changed. There, you know, bonds are zero, so. Typically, it says high, but you typically don't see too much. It's typically the language right here that's, that will affect it. Um, and again, it's, it's tentative at some time it will come out. Again, harder news release to trade. Nothing really, nothing super crazy about that one. But going into here, okay, so we start talking about French GDP, consumer confidence, price indexes in Germany in particular. The German market is really what controls the euro. I mean, between Germany and France, those two economies, that, that's where the, the euro is kind of pin, you know, pegged to, all right? And you can see that that's starting to go down a bit. So those could be you know, great morning movers. Going down to the 8.30, you see right here, CPE core. Okay, that's considered high, but there's a lot of stuff, right? I mean, we have income, spending, real spending. Again, right now, personal spending is somewhat important because right now, the retail trader is what's making the market move. People are still buying and selling that consumer confidence. Uh, again, when people spend money, that's what keeps the economy alive. When people get scared and don't spend money, that's what hurts it. Okay, that's why you see, you know, Stimulus bills are giving people extra money to spend to go back into the market, right? That's kind of the, the, the theory and the, and the plan behind it. So personal spending is important, okay? These, these start dropping, then companies are like, hmm, people aren't spending money. Let me be a little bit careful, all right? So even though they're marked medium, they do have the potential to move a bit. Dropping down consumer confidence index, again, these are kind of the, the parameters that help build this one. Visit 10 a.m. on Tuesday, okay? This will be a market mover. It's also situated around 10 a.m. in the morning, which just happens to be one of the popular reversal times. Reversal times where? Well, in the stock market, okay? Futures, you'll see a lot of times whether 10 or 10.30 is where the, those reversals kick in in the morning, which just happens to be when this consumer confidence number comes out. So if you're in positions, look for a potential reversal around 10 based off this consumer confidence number, okay? Uh, then we have some China manufacturing late at night. And again, here's that CPI, the consumer price index for the Aussie. You'll see there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, a lot of the stuff you don't really don't have to pay attention to. It's really these two. Okay, the, the consumer price index is this is what's going to move it. Okay, um, that's that 9:30 number at night. All right, going into Wednesday. All right, Wednesday we start off early again. German unemployment data. Okay, definitely, definitely, definitely important. Okay, and then we jump in and you can see all the eurozone gross domestic profits, CPI, all the big names, the GDPs, the CPIs. Bam, all that's hitting at 5 a.m. Eastern time. Okay, so. A lot of stuff early morning. Um, if you are a West Coaster, this is actually, this will be super late for you, but a lot of stuff going on over here, okay, on Wednesday morning. Drop it into kind of when we're actually awake. You'll see CAD GDP, and again, this could be nice for a little dollar CAD trade. Um, nothing else really going on. I mean, you have, you know, this, and you have kind of the, you know, ADP employment change at 8.15, you know, the cost index, eh, it's not a big one, but CAD GDP, if you like CAD pairs, Okay, this is a this will be a nice little mover for CAD. All right, uh, dropping lower again, crude oil at 10:30. Okay, again, summer and oil tend to be uh, interesting things, and you'll see we've really been stuck between this 56 and you know 57-ish. I mean, but really between 55 and 56, I mean, it's literally bouncing back and forth. I'm shocked it hasn't been a bit more volatile, but that's kind of what we have. Uh, again, those inventories again at Nadex. I know this is mostly forex based, but you guys can trade commodities over there as well, and it's. In my opinion, it's a better place to do it than in the futures market because, again, you have a lot more control over your position here, all right? And then, then in the afternoon, that's where those rate decisions come in, right? Uh, and again, you guys will see it's expected to drop, okay? It's not, you know, everybody, I mean, this is what they've been talking about it. It's 0.25. It's not going to be the, the 0.5 that the market originally wanted. Um, but again, he may say something here. And again, we could get surprised. If we get surprised, the market will move to react very, very fast, all right? Uh, going into Thursday, Thursday, we get into the pound kind of inflation reports. And, and again, Barney speaking in London again, okay, bank rates, again, not expected to change, but now that they have a new PM, it's going to be interesting. This is the first kind of data that sets that we have coming out. Um, 
like I said, I joked about this last week with my students. I really, really, really hope that Trump has sent, you know, an invite to Twitter to uh, Boris Johnson. Because I think if he starts tweeting too, then we have two guys that can move the market at like three o'clock in the morning by tweeting, right? Um, that's what I'm hoping for, right? I, I, I'm really getting into these guys tweeting because it definitely moves the market pretty quickly at this point um, when you catch them. So a lot of inflation, a lot of bank rates. Again, great stuff early morning on Thursday, okay? Then we go into manufacturing numbers. And again, manufacturing, if you are producing goods, you believe that people are going to keep buying it. We have Canadian manufacturing and we have US, you know, ISM manufacturing. So again, that's great news this week too, you know? And these are stacked. CAD at 930. Again, trade this with two hour binaries. And then over here, the ISM manufacturing. And again, being at 10 o'clock and then there being nothing else really for the rest of the day, one of two things is going to happen. We're going to get stuck in a trend at that point, and then you're opened up for some of the call spreads, right? You can kind of run some of these call spreads a little bit farther, or we're going to get stagnant. Everybody's going to look in for non-farm non payroll the next day. Okay, those are one of two things are going to happen. But again, being at 10 a.m., again, popular reversal time. It's either 10 or 10.30 in the morning. If the market is great and these numbers are bad, that will tank the market. If the market's not doing good that morning and these numbers look great that people are still producing, that could give the market the boost for the day. All right, so that's understanding your news there. Now, going into Friday, here we go. Non-farm payroll, okay? Running all over here. And again, unemployment rate and the payroll numbers, I think, are important. This was a surprise last time. Number of new jobs that are coming online. I think, though, I think that this is going to be the more impactful number again this week. And here's why. So, again, the president doesn't necessarily care about popularity or anything else. He does care about what the economy is doing, and he uses that as his gauge. Unemployment rate coming down and kind of hovering at kind of what its low is is a big deal for him. If this starts ticking back up again, that does kind of hurt, you know, the November kind of, you know, primaries. And, you know, again, anything election based going in November, they want this stuff as high as possible. Right, or, 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 I'm sorry, in this case, as low as possible, but they want everything in a positive light. If this starts ticking up, they're gonna start doing some things to really bring this back down again and try to tweak some of this data. Okay, so I think if this ticks up, I think that's gonna send some shockwaves. If it ticks back down again, it'll be business as usual, and I think that's what they're gonna be looking for. It's not expected to change, but in case it does, be ready, all right? Um, and then again, at 10 o'clock, you're seeing your factory or your durable goods, your university mission you know, sentiment, uh, and again, Baker, Baker Hughes, I don't really put too much stock into that one. So that is your week as far as news goes. All right, so let's go into the charts. Now, this week, I'm uh, mixing it up a little bit for you guys. So you guys will see that we have some new charts up here. All right, um, we're going to start over here. So I'm sure at this point, most of you guys know that Nadex is um, kind of a sister company with IGUS. So they have a great charting platform. I've been trying to test it out and, you know, kind of get some, get more familiar with it. So I've been using it and I used it for my students last week for our chart schools. So you'll see some things already on there, but we're going to start using the same analysis, but using this, this tool. Um, you guys can definitely, again, you guys can get signed up for IG. I, I, I'm actually very, very impressed. A lot of the web platforms, I don't necessarily love as much. Um, I feel they're limited, but I do really, really like this one. I found that within a couple of days, I was able to get very, very proficient on it. And I'm sure I'm still missing a few things, but you know, we'll, we'll do our best with this one. So um, obviously, no indicators on there because there's nothing, nobody load customs, but that's okay. We don't necessarily need them. Look at on the daily, you can see that, again, we were talking about how we were, we were really kind of sucked into this blue kind of basing area, right? And there's about a 50 pit zone, but we were sucked into it, right? We wanted to get some type of a breakout. And if we did, we were looking for this target down here at 74.73. And again, we're, we're basically half, you know, over halfway there at this point. You guys can see we had this level of basing and we saw. This was the initial kind of pop, right? The buyer stepped in, it hit there, popped again, it hit again, and then exploded off, okay? This is where it became interesting, okay? At, typically, touch number one, touch number two, you're okay. It's touch number three, touch number four, where we tend to break these areas of buyers and sellers, okay? So this area below, this tan for me, is a trap. People know that it's basing. What are they waiting for to do? Break out of the base, right? When they break out of the base, that's where you're able to snag people that aren't really looking at the charts too often, okay? So we had kind of a basing here. When it went lower, game, same thing. It trapped people and then blew higher. Came over here, bounce, came down here. It went right to the back to the bottom. Boom, launched itself out. Now, this time it blew through, and this is what I like. I like the breakthrough, the retest, and then the collapse down again. And that's kind of what we're looking for right now. As you can see, again, it's a little bit slow. It's Monday, and again, that's what we have to, you know, we have to deal with. 
But I love how it came below, came back up the retest, and then kind of pushed down again. So I'm looking for this to continue down to touch the profit target. Um, right now, I mean, areas of basing, uh, you know, the best area really is kind of up here. Okay, if you guys were to take a square, um, you know, grab, you know, something along these lines. I like the top of this section here, but I also like this as far as a continuation. If it's able to pop up just a little bit on the four hour into this area, particularly tonight when there's Aussie news, I'm sorry, tomorrow there's Aussie news. Um, if we can get, you know, kind of sideways movement, if price pops into this area with the news, I'll be looking to short this and, and, and go, you know, south. Um, it's not a very big area. I'll measure it down here. Okay. Um, you're talking about eight pips. And that was drawn on a four hour. All right. That was drawn with here. Eight pip risk is not bad. Again, uh, that level as well is right around 7508. Okay. To uh, 7517. All right. So a two hour. Two hour binary would be perfect for this if we do get a pop based off of news, but we'll see how kind of the day progresses um, today into tomorrow. All right. Uh, another perk for this, if you guys didn't notice it as well, I drew it up here. This this is the four hour chart on my upper right. It draws the boxes on the 30 minutes. Okay. So if you guys are looking for a charting platform for your currencies, go over there, get a demo, start putting some things on there. You guys will be pretty impressed with this one. All right. Uh, let's jump across and look at the Aussie dollar. Okay. Aussie dollar, I've liked a little bit more. This one actually blew through my target last week, right? Um, I was talking about breaking the initial kind of bounce here. Um, one one word of caution I had for my students was just be careful. We have these wicks over wicks that show us imbalance in price and also where buyers are. And you'll see we've kind of pushed right below that. Um, this area right here at 69.27, that was the area that we we're looking for for target. We wanted to get out of this position before this prior bounce. And you'll see it had enough power to break through and then it just stopped. Okay, it just halted. Um, and again, the reason why you guys can see it's looking back, there's some orders kind of hidden over here. All right, now again, US traders come online, this probably will start moving again. That's what we're looking for. We're waiting for it to get some momentum back again. Um, again, pushing it back, you can see there is a bit of a zone right here at 68.96, kind of right below that 69 number. There's a bit of a pullback. Okay, you guys can see right here. You guys see this where it drove up, came down, came back up, and then based, and then boom, launched. Let's see if I can make it a little bigger for you guys. There we go. You guys see this pop right here? That's kind of what I'm talking about. Okay, this is this this gray line is where price currently is. This is a pretty nice zone, right? It based and then one, two, three, and then four. Okay, so that's I'm I'm kind of a little bit cautious because where price is right below us. Um, and if you're in, great. Still, um, but just be looking to get profit out. Um, back down again. There we go. Okay, you guys can see the prices over here. All right. Take that off. All right. So that's the Aussie. Uh, like I said, I'll be looking for some type of buying down here as well at the 68.35 zone. We'll see where it goes. Um, you know, that's about 90 pips from where we are. This one does not have that big of it. This is kind of a that's a day and a half worth of an ATR. Um, but again, potential new setup for tomorrow night. So just keep that on your radar. All right. Uh, going over, let's look at the euro pound. Uh, where is it? Okay. All right. So euro pound. So euro pound had a nice pullback. Um, this is one of those ones that frustrated the heck out of me. Um, I had a target here and I, I missed it by like two or three pips and ended up having to take myself out a bit early. Um, all right. So this is a little bit confusing for you guys as well. So this was an area where there was news on Friday. Okay, and we talked about if price comes up, look for kind of bouncing, and it did. It bounced from the top side right to the bottom side. Uh, it was it was just funny. We drew it, and we're like, yeah, there we go. Uh, since that time, price has not only ground its way all the way back up again, it kind of based, it touched this top area, it went down to the basing area, and then pushed through. It did exactly what I was hoping that it would do going into this week. Okay, so right now, if you guys look on the daily, you can see that we we're back up into the last buy or the last selling area, right? This um, 9031 to 9057, this 30 pip range up here. Last time price hit it at base for a second and then collapsed through. And price had the drive back down. Hold on, let me take this off so you guys can see. You see price drove all the way down. It broke a level here. It broke basing here. It broke basing here. And it broke basing here. And I mean, again, this is the best, the cleanest one. And it went all the way down before it pushed higher. So I like that about this trade. I'm looking for some type of a reversal if I can get it up in this area. Have not gotten it yet. Have nothing that shows me it's even ready to stop yet. And I'm starting to look for pound data. Okay. 
you know, um, there is big pound data on Thursday. Um, we'll see what this is able to do. Again, it's a couple days from now. Um, let me click something real quick over here. I'm trying to see if there's anything else really tentative. There's European data on, there's Germany preliminary CPI tomorrow, which could affect this a bit. Um, and then besides that, it's Wednesday morning. You have some Spanish, some CPI. Um, yeah, Thursday is really the big day where all the pound stuff comes online. So um, we'll see what it's able to do. Again, nothing in here show, show, is showing me right now that it wants a reverse. Um, everything is just showing right now that it's going to continue to grind higher. So we'll see. If we can get something of an entry, um, I am not against shorting from this area. I just have to get the confirmation on the lower time frames. So depending on if you're here or you're not here, again, look on your drop it. I mean, this is right now set for 30 minutes, but maybe even drop down to the 10 if you see some, you know, kind of, you know, some type of a pattern, you know, filling. Um, it just, it's not showing me right now. All right. Um, that's it for this one, really. Um, let me jump across and we'll look at the euro dollar. Uh, where is it? I lost it. I need to put these in order. All right. Euro dollar. So euro dollar did the exact opposite. Euro dollar came down and same thing. We had this buying area, and again, this is a great little kind of push off, right? Uh, you guys don't have like my measured moves on this one anymore, but you can see that. Um, let me see if I can do it. Um, not a horizontal line. So if here was your measured move from before, uh, let me see if I can. Whoops. Edits. Let's make this a color that's easy to see. We'll do that yellow. We'll make it thick. Okay. You guys will see that there is your one measured move, and there's your second. I'd like to go a little bit farther, but we're pretty close. Actually, this new spike almost hit it. Actually, there. We were very, very close to the second measured move. Um, again, <laughs> the measured moves happen everywhere. But the reason why we did the second one is because we pushed down. You had this level of basing that we talked about last week. or We've talked about it for a little while. Price came back up again. It hit this kind of sawtooth. It dropped. Okay. Came back up and gave you guys a re-entry. And that re-entry was actually last week. Um, the 22nd is right, actually the 22nd is right here. We had just missed it. It was uh, the prior one on Thursday. So it came down and hit the target area we wanted. Now we're looking for an entry to go short on this one. Um, again, hasn't really broken through. We had that one new spike up and down, as I mentioned on Friday. And then it's basically, you know, again, we pulled back and it's stuck inside of this area. So I'm looking for some type of nice push down and then a pullback on this lower time frame. Um, what I want to see is I want to see an area of basing. This kind of bit right here, I'm not super worried about it. I mean, price did hit it and then launch up based off of news. Uh, but the way that it formed, it's not the most beautiful. I mean, typically you like the low to come from the red candle, not the green, but it can happen that way. So there is, and again, this is just a bit of warning here. This is a bit of a trap area sitting right here. Okay. Um, let me edit that and we'll change this to... Um, a blue area. So a little bit of a warning area. I'm really kind of looking for it to break down below this level. And um, we're looking at 111.02. So really 111. Um, that's where we need to break. You know, guys, I've, I've been talking about breaking this 111 area. And once we break 111, people start talking about, oh, 110 is next and then parity. Um, I know that's a big jump between the two, but that 111 area is a pretty big psychological level. 110 is huge, but 110 is a big one that we've broken below. Um, and again, this area, you guys can see the second it broke through, it Im immediately popped back out again. So we have our one touch here. We kind of had a little bit of a touch, but, but this is definitely a touch here. Each time it drives lower, it's taking more and more buying orders out of this area. Again, I'm waiting for kind of the break of this. And uh, again, we're looking for an eventual target down here at 110. Okay. Somewhat of a more of a swing trade, uh, longer time frame trade. All right. Um, let's see, looking at Euro Yen. And what I like about that too, guys, is you'll notice that the euro pound is in a selling area up top. And again, it's in another zone below. Okay, If it continues to, again, kind of go to areas of buying and selling, that's what I'm kind of looking for, right? All right, so this guy, whew, nice bounce up, right? We had this big explosion on the 30 minute, three candles up again. And what we're really looking for is kind of a retracement to the way back down again. So this one, whew, it's been like watching paint dry. So it entered the area. It's gone short. Okay. It's it's grinding down, but man, it's taken forever. It's kind of really just wah, wah, wah. It's just slow, right? When the U.S. traders come in line today with the U.S. stock market. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I, oh, no, we're on the right one. Um, when they come online, 
we will start to see some movement in the yen and things will start to change a bit. For me, again, I still I still have an initial target down here of 102. I'd probably front run a little bit. I'd probably put it 102.20, um, a little bit above kind of where that box is. Um, again, this is about 114 pip move. So this is taking a day or two. And again, you guys can see looking on this top four hour chart, it's taken a bit. But just as large and extended range as this candle is, and the fact that it went all the way up, it grabbed this really nice clean area up top and started to push back down again. It's a slow race, you know, it's a slow retrace, but unfortunately this is, you know, this is race track trading. Sometimes it doesn't just pop up and come straight back down again. It is a grind to the down. Um, but again, we are going through um, on this one too. If you guys were in this trade, again, I know Nadex is set up a little bit differently. Stop losses are somewhat inherent. They're not a traditional stop loss where you're setting anything differently. Your risk is whatever you're paid to get into the trade. Um, again, if you had been trailing this one down, uh, at this point, you're over a one to one, you're kind of at like a one and a half to one. Um, again, there's no reason for you to you know, be able to take a loss if you were trading this in spot, okay? But for Nadex, again, understand the stop loss is, is, is really different, it's inherent. Um, any longer term positions in here, just make sure your, you know, your entry is, you know, your, again, your risk to reward ratio makes sense. Um, this is uh, obviously definitely a candidate for spreads, uh, as slow as this is going for the week. Because if it, you know, if it ends up over here, somewhere like in the middle, again, your spread payout, is whatever the movement is based off of where you entered. Okay, it's not like the binary where it's whether all or nothing. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar with spreads, again, check out some of the other videos we have online. Just, you know, defining that. There's some really great educators um, in the index education section. Okay, uh, but that's what we're kind of where we're at with this one. Um, going across, let's look at the. Uh, we'll do pound yen first. All right, so pound yen. So we had two targets in pound yen. Both of those got hit last week. Um, we had these dotted lines that we were looking forward to come down to. Um, there was a continuation pattern in this one. Um, it's nice to finally get some movement. Again, I, this thing has just been so flat. We're waiting for it to break out of the zone. Again, we had a nice pop up and we had one target entry on this one. We had a reversal pattern at the top. Okay, It kind of came up. It ran into basically this four hour zone up here. You guys can see this basing level here. The first one kind of went to one and a half to one and kind of turned on us. Right, so it was a more or less a break even trade. The second pop, nice explosion up, grab more orders, and then bam, it started to do its kind of downward push. Okay, remember with price action, we are looking for areas where we see large kind of explosive moves. You know, something that's like, well, there's where it moved, right? Here was target one, here was target two, it kept going. And what I liked about this one is we had this kind of second area down here that if price was able to retest up, we wanted to continue it, right? It did. It broke through, it came back up, it retested the target area, which was also a prior buying area. Okay, the prior buying area right here is what made this our target. It hit, it came lower, and again, it looks something like this. This is that pattern that I talk about all the time, right? Whoops. The break, retest, launch. Okay, so here's where our target was in the initial short. And again, we could have gotten out of the position and waited, because again, it did have the ability to bounce and go back up. When it broke below, when it came up and retested, this became our new level of risk, and now it's just collapsing, okay? Now, this one is also, you guys remember this big, long wick right here? That's where we are right now. We're about three-fourths of the way through. We're getting some good movement to the downside. I like this. I'm happy with this, that this is being pushed down. Uh, and again, this is the same uh, pound weakness that we saw inside of the euro pound. So I'm liking this movement. I'm hoping this thing is coming back to life in August. Uh, July was a little bit slow. We only had two or three days that there was real movement in this pair. I'm loving this, okay? Um, as far as jumping into a short right now, this area I'm not super in love with, and let me explain why. If you guys see this area right here, we did have a level of basing, right? So here was the original trade for this one, okay? Uh, here was your kind of basing level. It broke, came back very, very fast, retested, and then launched. So unfortunately, it's already been hit, and with these two wicks kind of it being at the same spot, kind of almost, the, they're almost exactly the same tops on there, it shows me that they established orders, and then they cleared those orders off again. So it may not be something that we want to trade a second time. Uh, there is a little bit of a base right above, right, right here. I'd like to get somewhat of, if we can get a green hitting this kind of single wick against a wall here, and then a red, then yeah, I'd be looking to continue this to the downside. Um, be cautious, though. We are a bit away. We're about 100 pips away. Be cautious with this 132.40 area. Support and resistance traders are going to see the bottom of this candle, and they're going to have so many orders lumped in that area. 
I won't be surprised if it hits that area and then takes a nice bounce. So if you are short, make sure that that's a target. Get out. Um, I do believe there will be a you know a bear trap sitting over there uh, for because again it's an easy support and resistance entry. All right. Um, let's go to pound dollar. All right, pound dollar. Very similar formation, right? Very similar pattern. Um, this one did bounce. Now this one did not retrace, and I had this conversation with my student the other day. Um, just because you have a strategy does not mean it works 100% of the time. Unfortunately, this is one we were unable to get into. And the reason why is because it didn't retrace. It just kept going. I mean, it paused here, it went lower, went sideways, went lower, kind of ground lower and just kept falling, right? Went right off the cliff. So sometimes you can't get into them. You guys can see over here, it bounced. You know, again, it didn't really give us a true retrace, okay? Um, he was trying to say, well, didn't it retrace? You know, here, I'll extend this across so you guys can see it. Um, we had it, it was there, okay? He's like, well, di didn't this retrace? It's like, eh, it didn't really break cleanly. I mean, I guess, I mean, we could have dropped it to a lower time frame, but this is just, just a word of warning. When you guys are doing your charting, if it doesn't kind of jump out and just smack you in the face, you really got to question whether that's a trade or not, or are your eyes forcing it? I, I had this discussion with him last week. It's better to miss a trade then force a bad one, if that makes sense. If you miss a trade, there will always be another trade out there, but you don't lose capital trying to force something. If you force a trade and you try and you, you play tricks on yourself saying, I see it, it's there, 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 but it's not really there, and you lose money on that, that's on you, it's your fault. Okay, you force a trade. It's better to miss a trade and protect your capital than force a trade and lose your capital, if that makes sense, okay? Uh, and this is one of those, this is one of the cases. I didn't trade this one. I didn't get into this one. I wish I could say that I shorted this all the way up here, but I didn't. Um, I was unable to get into this one on the retracement. It just it just took off to the downside. And sometimes that happens. Okay. Not, not upset about it. This one also has a similar situation, but you guys can see this one broke through. Okay. So it's been a long time since this one is here. Um, I mean, I can go uh, changes to a weekly. You guys can see there's a weekly zone that this one is about to run into. Um, actually, it's right at the weekly zone right now. This uh, 122.91, you guys will see we had a pop here, right? It is right here. Okay, if I was gonna draw it, I would say this is what we're looking for, okay? This kind of pull back and pull up and then retest, price is right there, okay? So be cautious with any continuing shorts, just you know, looking on this chart. Um, if we get a bounce, I wouldn't be surprised off of this weekly, although it could go a bit lower down to this zone as well because this retested off this lower one. So just be cautious. Again, that's why multiple time frame analysis is so important. Um, again, I want to see U.S. traders come online. Um, this one has a similar kind of pop up that kind of sideways down, but hasn't been an easy one to snag to the downside. All right. Uh, let's go across and look at dollar Swiss. OK. Load up. There we go. All right. So. Dollar Swiss was pushing, 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 pushing. On the daily, you guys can see that we ran into this little zone, right? We had a zone right there. That's what we ran into. Okay, you guys can see. I just drew it on the daily, and what happened? It populated on the four hour and on the 30 minute. I love charting platforms that do that. Okay. Um, you guys can see I could actually make this a little bit smaller. The actual zone would have been more or less there. Okay, so you can see the risk on that one. Uh, it is going down. It did pop off its little base over here. So, uh, you know, just letting it do its thing. Um, this one tends to be a little bit slower. It does respect zones pretty often. Um, this was, I marked some of these retraces and we're doing a lesson on risk. Um, this was just the retest off of here. Um, so right now, again, I am watching and I am cautious of this zone right here, the uh, 9907 down to 99000 and then that little pip out of five. A um, little bit of a kind of a speed bump, but there is a projection target down here for 98.56. Okay, that would be the start of this kind of really extended range, large body candle that kind of pushes us up on the four hour. Okay, and that would be a retracement back down really into this kind of basing level here. Um, I don't see any reason why this couldn't come back down, um, have a little bit of dollar weakness kind of put into this. And again, you know, raising interest rates is typically good. Lowering interest rates is typically not good. So I think it's factored in right now. People are expecting that short, and that's why the price got driven higher. So they have to sell it. Um, they're looking to sell it at the higher price to buy it back lower. So they're kind of projecting this one. Uh, this one will be a big mover, though, if we get a kind of a surprise um, rate cut. So right now, for me, I'm more bearish, looking forward to come down. Um, looking at dollar CAD. And you guys can see the charts actually load pretty quick. 
uh, understand I am, you know, streaming, have two platforms up. Um, I have a lot of stuff going on and it, the charts are still loading rather fast. So for this one, we had this uh, daily level of basing. Um, we drew a bunch of lines over here. I should probably remove those lines. Uh, they were actually um, from a different time frame. Um, so we had this kind of area we were looking for to get in. We're looking for a confirmation pattern. You guys can see it hit, came back, and has retested the area. Um, I need US traders to come online. Uh, I'm not in this position now, but it's a position that I'm looking to get into. Again, this would be some CAD strength, dollar weakness. Um, the total movement on this one is, I'm looking to grab about 154. That is about two and a half days. It's about two and a half days worth of ATR on this one. So this is a longer term position. Um, I was going to wait to see how the open looked to see if, um, you know, we had any like kind of large spikes first. Uh, and then I was looking for a weekly position on this one. Um, again, have to see what the prices look like once the market opens and they are able to get true volatility reads. But again, this this is a potential for a spread or a binary um, to kind of push back to the downside. And I like the way that it's basing. I like the fact that it's a you know larger time frame supply zone right on the daily. And again, that's what we're bouncing off of on the other two. Uh, looking at the dollar again, so the last pair. All right, so this one also came back up. And again, I'll extend this across. You guys can see this one hit right here on the 26th on Friday. Um, and we kind of got a push down and is now pulled back a little bit. So um, we're kind of still in that range. There was able, there was ways to kind of shorten the risk on this one. If we made the risk too small, we didn't actually hit the zone, but we were able to kind of shrink it down from uh, down to 11 pips versus being 21 pips. So didn't quite get the entry we were looking for. Um, we may have gotten a little bit too conservative on there, but we'll see how it goes. It's pulled back. Like I said, I think, again, this is not going to move too much until the U.S. market comes online. Um, I'm a bit more bearish. Um, I do think we can run about 40 pips down to this 108.14, the start of this kind of pop. Um, I don't think it's going to go too much higher just because of this area. This was a very, very strong kind of candle. That I mean, you guys, this is the largest candle on this entire kind of chart here. Big push to the downside. I like this hit. I like it pushing back down again, um, especially if we can't get a higher green here. If these greens failure to go higher and it's a red day, or if this is where we kind of peak, um, once we start to get that confirmation, I do think we could actually even potentially get back down to the 107.50 range, which would be kind of the start over here, kind of this kind of channel, you know, kind of sideways kind of trending, right? This is the hot, this is the upper side, and then the lower side's down here at 107. I think we can get to this kind of 50% mark um, if we kind of put some room in. Now, this one will be a big mover this week. A lot of US-based news, so just be cautious of that one. Um, I would definitely focus on... Areas where you're seeing, you know, one of the tricks we did last week, uh, again, top side here, bottom side at 107. It's about 160 pip range back and forth, but I think that's where our basing levels are going to be. Uh, if we do explode out the top, the next kind of true zone is going to be up here at this 109.38 level. Uh, it is about what, 60, 70 pips from where we are right now. Just kind of keep that, you know, keep that in mind if we do start to break out of this top level. And breaking out of that top level is going to be... Um, 108.9, basically 109, just make it simple, um, but about 40 pips above, which is about 1 ATR, okay? Um, that's it for me this week, guys. Again, I'm going to be looking at the euro dollar, pound dollar to play the uh, rate change. I won't do it in the dollar yen because unfortunately there's some conflicting factors with interest rates, stock market, and dollar pricing. Um, so for me, I'm going to be trading it. And again, I may even trade it with the Aussie dollar. It depends what the Aussie dollar looks like uh, in retracements. But the Aussie dollar, the euro dollar, and the, the pound dollar are going to be three that I'm going to trade on Wednesday. So just keep you know keep that forefront. Uh, again, if you have positions that are profitable on, be a little bit cautious going into those news releases. Uh, that can mess it up for some people uh, because stop losses don't necessarily work when you have that, that much of a movement. All right. So with that being said, guys, went a little bit late today. Had a lot to cover. Uh, if you guys have any other questions about what we do or kind of where you can, if you have any, again, something that I talked about, I do talk quick. Uh, you guys can reach me and let's see, where is it? You guys can reach me at these different places. You can go to keeptradingsimple.com. You can reach us on Instagram. You can message us on Facebook. Uh, you can catch us on Twitch 9 p.m. tonight or check us on Discord. That's the information. Screenshot this. Um, we have our traders in there and they're talking and posting trades all day. They use the same strategies, obviously. And uh, again, email us support at keeptradingsimple.com. All right. So with that being said, thank you guys so much. Have a good week trading and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. We'll be in August. It is my birthday month, and I love me some cupcakes. All right, take care, guys.